Hey saxophone player, I have assembled a little group of videos based on showing harmonics, the overtone series, explaining the overtone series, and showing it on the alto saxophone. I'm going to touch on the mouthpiece difference. I did a demonstration of overtones with my Meyer, my more traditional sounding mouthpiece, and with my mouthpiece that is more modern sounding. So hopefully this will give you a little more of an idea of how these things work together. Your setup has a big effect on what you can do with the overtones. And so if I just tell you practice this overtone series and see if there's something you can do, if you stand on your head, you can get it to come out. Um, it could be really misleading if your setup is set up to be very dark, doesn't have a whole lot of higher sounds in the partials. Uh, it's going to be really difficult to get those overtones to come out. And what I did in the demonstration is I showed you with the hard rubber mouthpiece, uh, it doesn't have a whole lot of uh, highs in the sound. It's a darker sound, and it therefore has less overtones to be able to, like when you go up the overtone series, you can't play up to the really high squeaky stuff. It stops you at mm, like halfway in. You can still play altissimo with it, but you just can't play like high, high stuff. And uh, th there was a lot of questions in the live stream about the high stuff. And, uh, you know, people also afterwards uh, sending me private messages and stuff about that. So I figured I would do a video to address altissimo and overtones. Because really, to play 
this properly, you have to have control of the overtone series. If you have control over the overtone series, then the fingerings will work for you and you'll be able to play altissimo notes using altissimo fingerings. Not all fingerings work the same for each saxophone brand, each different type of saxophone. So you will have to check like from Selmer to Yamaha to Yanagizawa. There's many fingerings that might be the same, but there's a couple fingerings that'll probably be different also because the way overtones, oh, the overtones tune, because you have to play them in tune. You know, if you're trying to play like a really high C, it needs to sound like a C and not be really sharp and sound, you know, and it's not the tone, it's the pitch. It just ends up sounding bad. And the fingering is designed to help you play on your saxophone in tune and also get that particular squeaky note out that you're trying to get out. Every squeaky note you play, and I'll explain this in the uh, live stream, every squeak that you play is an overtone of something else. So there's nothing that you play that comes out of your saxophone that's not in the saxophone, that's not part of the, the sound of the sax, and it's not something that you just have to learn how to control because once you learn how to control it, it's like all cool. When you can't control it, it's not cool. There's nothing cool about being out of control, you know, but when you can start to control things, it ends up being really cool. So that's what altissimo is. So let's listen to the difference of the sound of the alto saxophone when I'm playing the hard rubber mouthpiece in a song. And then I also have a song example with the metal mouthpiece. And that's a different sound and it gives more harmonics. So it's they're trade-offs, and that's something that's really important to understand. There's a trade-off between a darker sound and less of the high harmonics that might be available to you, and a brighter sound, which you have to deal with it being bright, and more harmonics that it gives you more notes that it might give you on the top, but maybe it makes some of those lower notes on your saxophone not sound so good. So you have to balance between those two things to get the mix so that you've got enough lows and the highs that you want and for everybody that balance is going to be a little different but for many saxophone players that you might listen to it's very much the same it's you know it's, it's like they basic they sound good when they play in the written range of the saxophone and when they get it to their harmonics uh, it's really high but it still sounds good so I mean that's what we're looking for we're looking for a trade-off that gives us as much as we can good sound on the saxophone and still high notes. And you'll see uh, with the Meyer, the hard rubber mouthpiece on the alto, it gives me a nice sound. I like the sound uh, in the body of the instrument. I don't know if I like the, res the uh, feel, the response as much, but I really like the sound because it doesn't sound too bright. And it doesn't hurt your ears at all. But the metal mouthpiece is just, it's more of a show-off piece because it goes higher and faster and louder. So that's the difference between the two pieces. Uh, I did not take off my sound booster. I left it on. I talked a little bit about this in the live stream the other day too. But this is a sound booster for the Gardala mouthpiece. That cuff right there, it goes on the end of the mouthpiece. It adds a lot of weight to the mouthpiece. Here it is pulled off. And then I just put it up into place. The idea is, is I, I left my sound booster on also. So that's all that is. If you didn't see the live stream, you know, we talked a little bit about that in the stream.